Doctors is joined by internationally renowned gastrointestinal surgeon, um, Professor Hemant Kocha. Today, we're discussing the complications of gallstones and gallstone disease. It's becoming more and more common as surgery in the UK increased to just over 80% from 2000 to 2019. Good afternoon, Professor Kocha. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm well, thank you. It's really nice to have you here. It's really nice. Um, So could you tell us um, a little bit more about yourself and your work? So my name is Professor Hemant Kocher. I'm Professor of Liver and Pancreas Surgery. I work uh, at Bart's Cancer Institute, a premier research institute in London. And I also work in the NHS as well as in the private sector. I do surgery on liver, pancreas, gallbladder and bile duct. I treat patients of those conditions. Great, thank you. Okay, so let's get started with the questions. Um, So if gallstones are left untreated, um, can this lead to complications? So gallstones are very commonly diagnosed nowadays, as you rightly mentioned. And they are diagnosed because of a number of scans are done for other reasons, and people get an incidental diagnosis of gallstones. These so-called incidental gallstones have no symptoms. So if the gallstones are not causing symptoms, so the asymptomatic gallstones, that means you don't have any pain or nausea or vomiting. Those are the commonest symptoms. Um, if you're asymptomatic gallstone bearer, then most likely those gallstones will not cause any problems. I say most likely, sometimes they do cause problems. Obviously, once you get symptoms, then they're likely to cause problems in the future. And those symptoms and problems can be of different types, and we can discuss this in a while and a little bit more about those. Great, thank you. Um, and what are the most common complications of gallstones disease? Sorry, gallstone disease. <laughs> so gallstones obviously form in the gallbladder. Mm-hmm. Gallbladder is a little sac just below our liver, which stores the bile. So the symptoms from gallstones are when gallstones start moving around and um, how do I call it? They, they become a little bit naughty. And when they are naughty, they, they can cause pain. The commonest uh, symptom is pain in the right upper part of your tummy. And that may be associated with a meal, particularly a fatty meal, because gallbladder responds to fat. Now, that's the commonest problem or commonest symptom. But gallstones can become even naughtier and cause infection in the gallbladder, in which case you become very, very unwell and have to be admitted to hospital for antibiotics. Um, and the further uncommon problems for the gallstones are when the gallstones uh, go further afield, so they go to the bile duct, that can cause jaundice, mm-hmm. or they go to the pancreas and they can cause pancreatitis, or they can go to the bowel and cause bowel problems. So gallstones, depending on the level of naughtiness, can cause uh, a varying degrees of problem uh, the simplest problems and the most common is just pain in the upper part of the tummy. Thankfully, the other problems are very rare. Okay, that's good to know, but they sound really tricky. Wow. It is indeed. Yeah. And therefore, if you have been diagnosed with gallstones, you should try and see your specialist in your area. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so how do you treat these complications? The, the commonest complication is when the gallbladder causes it infection in the gallbladder. Mm-hmm. Uh, we use the medical term cholecystitis, which means inflammation of the gallbladder. That's treated with antibiotics. Most often the antibiotics can be taken as tablet form and you can be at home with those antibiotics. But sometimes those antibiotics don't work or the pain is so severe that you have to be admitted to hospital for either an intravenous or a drip form antibiotic and uh, and painkillers which have to be taken by either injections or some other form. 
So you may require hospital admission for the commonest complication of gallstones. The other complications of gallstones, as I've told you before, when they go into the bile duct or in the pancreas or in the bowel, really require complex hospital care. So you're better off not managing those at home. Great, thank you. Um, so what do you do to encourage patients to stay away from developing complications? So the, if you know that you have gallstones, mm -hmm. um, then you have to be aware of what the symptoms may be so that if you get symptoms, you seek medical help. Once you've got symptoms, uh, then we say that the gallstones are not well behaved, they are naughty, and it's better to get rid of them. So the best way to deal with it is to remove the gallstones as well as the gallbladder. So that seems a little bit nonsensical why you're removing the gallbladder when that's not a problem. Um, but the gallstones form because the gallbladder's the gallbladder's job is to expel the bile from the gallbladder when you have a meal. If the gallbladder is unable to expel the bile, then the bile remains stagnant within the gallbladder and the stagnant bile causes gallstone formation. So if you form gallstones, that means the gallbladder is not working well. Yeah. So and interestingly, we as humans don't really require gallbladder for our day-to-day -day living. So we call gallbladder as a vestigial organ, an organ which is not required or not essential. So people do not miss the gallbladder. So in short, if you've got problems from gallbladder stones, then the treatment is to remove gallbladder along with the stones. And thankfully with advances in surgery, we can do it as a fairly straightforward keyhole operation, usually as a day case. Great, that's reassuring to know that we don't need it. So if you were to you know, come across problems with it, then you know that it wouldn't have much of an effect on the rest of the body, for example. So that's that's good to know. Um, so if gallstones are symptomless, um, asymptomatic, um, is it possible to live with them? Yeah, so uh, it's interesting you ask me this because as we do more and more studies in our, in our research institutions, we realize that um, up to 5% of women mm -hmm. uh, in the childbearing age group, which is from the age of 15 to, let's say, 50, uh, will have gallstones, but they just don't know about it. It's when you start scanning people that you know about it. And people think, why in women, why not in men? We don't know why, but the commonest theory is uh, the fluctuations in the female hormones, such as estrogen and progesterone, may make the gallbladder dysfunctional. Mm. Um, so a lot of people have gallstones. Um, you don't have problems such as pain in the tummy or nausea or vomiting. You probably are okay to live with the gallstones, but you should know what the symptoms are so that if they do occur, then you can seek help. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so a final question. Um, should people still take care if they are in this situation, like you said? Um, how can they manage living with gallstones, um, maybe through their diet or a healthy lifestyle, for example? Yeah, sure. I think the important thing to remember is how does the gallbladder function mm -hmm. and can we, um, can we manage the gallstones in that way? So gallbladder functions in response to a meal, particularly a fatty meal. So if you avoid fat in the in your meal, and I think per se that's a good thing to have a low fat diet, it's a very healthy thing to do. Yeah. Then you can avoid gallbladder from uh, go and the gallstones from becoming naughty. So so if you want to live with your gallstones and you have very little symptoms and you want to prevent the symptoms from coming ever, then remain on low fat diet and low fat diet does wonders for everybody. Absolutely great. That's fantastic easy knowledge um but sometimes difficult to actually go through with it but definitely definitely something that people should do fantastic okay well thank you very much professor kocha um it's been a pleasure thank you very much and have a nice day yes you too you too <laughs>
Um, so to find out more about Professor Kocher and how his expertise may be able to help you, visit his profile at topdoctors.co.uk.